Hi. Um, I'm just back from a short trip to Croatia where I decided to bring my small setup and test out just how easy it is to fly with. I've been assembling this for a while now and I'm just really excited to show you all the bits and how I got on with it, especially when it comes to flying with the whole thing in hand luggage. So last year I flew to Croatia as well, um, because that's where my family is from, um, and I brought my 61mm Space Cat. I also managed to bring it all in hand luggage that time, but there's two of us, so I was able to put the telescope and guide scope and ASIR and all of that into one backpack, and then the mount went into another. It was all okay, but I thought it would be cool to see how portable I can get it, and if I can assemble a setup that can fit into one piece of hand luggage, um, and also I had this amazing chance to catch Ro Fiaki uh, since I was traveling in July. Um, in the UK, it's way too low on the horizon. I think it doesn't reach even like above 10 degrees. And it's visible for something like two weeks of the year, so I'd never be able to get it from where I am. So this was a great opportunity for like a bucket list target. Anyway, last winter I got the Mini Cat 51, that new ultra-wide Petzval from William Optics. Um, very ambitious, brilliant spec in theory. <laughs> um, it's wide and fast, um, 178 millimeters of focal length and a focal ratio of 3.5. I made a video earlier this year about my impressions with it and why I wouldn't enthusiastically recommend it. <laughs> Um, you can also see what the field looks like, and this is not even on the edges, this is like two-thirds from the sensor to the corner. Um, also, annoyingly, larger stars have whiskers, but I'm still committed to using it, and when it comes to travel, it was a great size and a perfect field of view for my target. I attached an EAF to it here on the side, and I was umming and ahhing about whether I should remove it for travel and then reattach it on the other end, but actually, it was just fine like this, so the EAF stayed on the whole time. I just made sure that um, it was pointing up in the backpack so nothing was like pressing down on it. For the camera, and this was a really big upgrade and one that I was really on the fence about for a while, this is the ZWO ASI 2600 MC Air, the one that has on-axis guiding and Wi-Fi control in it. Um, I was reluctant simply because it's just so expensive. And it has all these components in it, so I was worried, you know, what if one of them fails and then you have this only partially usable, really expensive item. But having used it for a while now, um, on some reviews and then for traveling, it is just, it's so convenient. It's not just the fact that you don't have to carry a guide scope and camera and, and assier and mounting brackets and cables or anything, so it really like saves space and weight. Um, but the speed of setting up and getting started is just so convenient. It's, it's a bit addictive, to be honest. So because I had everything in the camera itself, all the cables I brought were power to mount, power to camera, EAF to camera, and then I also brought a cable um, from mount to camera. This isn't technically necessary because AM5 can connect with Wi-Fi, but I personally prefer to just bring a cable rather than risk something dropping out. And also a cable is easier to pack than the controller that's needed otherwise to enable the Wi-Fi. And then for the mount, I brought my AM5. Um, when I was getting this a while back, I was kind of going between AM5 and AM3, but then I settled for the bigger one because eventually I want to put something larger on it for galaxies. And also when I saw the AM3 and AM5 side by side, I just didn't see that much of a difference in size. I mean, for me personally, just not enough to commit to getting an AM3 just for the sake of more portability. Um, now, if they if they came out with something like an AM1, <laughs> something Star Adventure size, but with AM5 build, I would seriously consider that. And then there is the carbon fiber tripod and the little bits for it. And then another thing I brought is this 15 pound lead tracing panel that I use for uh, making the world's most unsophisticated flats, but it works. For power, um, these are the only two batteries I actually own, um, and I use them for planetary with my CPC so that I can move around. These are called the Celestron Power Tank, and they're lithium batteries um, with 12 volts and USB outputs. Um, but these worked great. Um, I have one for the mount and one for the camera. I can't tell you exactly how much time they can give, but I did about three hours each night and there was still charge left in them after I was done. 
and I also brought a charger for them to fill up during the day um, and they charge pretty quickly. These are compliant with all the flying regulations. Um, you can usually take two lithium batteries into hand luggage uh, that are under 160 watt hours each. So these are 84 each, so well under. Um, Celestron has a larger size of this called Power Tank Pro. So technically, if you needed more power, you could bring two of those, and they are perfectly something like 158 watt hours each. So two watt hours under the individual limit that you can take on a plane. So all of that went into this backpack with some simple padding with clothes and the tripod was attached on the outside. I didn't have any issues, even though I was flying with EasyJet. The backpack went under the seat. I didn't put it up into the overhead locker. The only thing I got asked was to take out the AM5 at Gatwick Airport. Um, I think because it's like a giant hunk of aluminium, so they wanted to see what it was. And then on the way back, they didn't ask about the mount, but they wanted to see the batteries to make sure that they are under the limit. So we made it down, all good. And even though I only had two clear nights out of seven, and Ro Fiyuki was still so low here that at the end of the imaging session I had ground coming into my frame, um, I did manage my first image of it, which I'm actually really happy about. Um, it was a bucket list target and absolutely worth carrying everything for. Things that I would tweak next time, um, apart from if and when there's an even smaller version of AM5, AM3, I will probably get an A5 size uh, lead panel rather than A4. It's just unnecessary for it to be this large. And I would remind myself that this clamp here can come off the mount, <laughs> so I'm not unnecessarily carrying it around. It's just been there forever and I think I just kind of forgot that it exists. Anyway, I was really excited to share this because I think overall it was a successful trip uh, when it comes to astrophotography. And I'm actually really excited to do it again sometime now that I have a like a tried and tested system. So yeah, clear skies and see you soon.